In the vastness of space, it's easy to feel small and insignificant. But scientists are getting freaked out by a new radical theory that suggests the whole universe is nothing but an atom. But what does that mean for us if the universe is an atom? In this video, we dive into scientists' panic that the universe might be an atom. There are many patterns that are repeated throughout the universe. Take as an example the solar system, which consists of a huge star, the sun, and smaller planets that revolve around it. This arrangement is replicated many times over with exoplanets orbiting distant stars outside of our solar system. However, scientists noticed another unique pattern or similarity, the arrangement of the atom which you were taught about in high school and the universe. And this is why our universe may turn out to be an atom. Atoms are the fundamental building blocks of matter. Aside from energy, everything in the universe is made of matter, so atoms make up everything in the universe. Because atoms were once thought to be the smallest things in the universe and could not be divided, the term atom comes from the Greek word for indivisible. We now know that atoms are made up of three subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons, which are made up of even smaller particles called quarks. So where did atoms come from? Atoms were created 13.7 billion years ago following the Big Bang. As the hot, dense new universe cooled, conditions became favorable for the formation of quarks and electrons. Quarks combined to form protons and neutrons, which then combined to form nuclei. According to CERN, this all happened within the first few minutes of the universe's existence. But it would be a while before we had the first atoms. It took 380,000 years for the universe to cool enough, for the electrons to slow down enough, for the nuclei to capture them, thus forming the first atoms. The first atoms were primarily hydrogen and helium, which are still the most abundant elements in the universe. Gravity eventually caused clouds of gas to coalesce and form stars, and heavier atoms were, and still are, created within the stars and ejected into space when the star explodes as a supernova. Protons and neutrons are heavier than electrons that are found in the nucleus of the atom. Electrons are extremely light and they exist in a cloud around the nucleus. The radius of the electron cloud is 10,000 times that of the nucleus. Protons and neutrons are roughly the same mass, however, one proton is approximately 1,835 times heavier than an electron. Atoms always have the same number of protons and electrons. A proton added to an atom creates a new element, whereas a neutron added to the atom creates an isotope or heavier version of that atom. You might be surprised at how long humans have entertained the idea of atoms. Democritus, a Greek scientist and philosopher, developed the theory of the atom as early as 440 BC. Democritus's theory of atoms was most likely based on the work of previous philosophers. Democritus begins his explanation of the atom with a stone. A cut stone yields two halves of the same stone. If the stone were continuously cut, there would eventually be a piece of the stone that was too small to be cut. The term atom is derived from the Greek word for indivisible, which Democritus concluded must be the point at which a being, any form of matter, can no longer be divided. His explanation included the ideas that atoms exist independently of one another, that there are infinite number of atoms, that atoms can move, that atoms can combine to form matter but do not merge to form a new atom, and that atoms cannot be divided. However, because most philosophers at the time, particularly the influential Aristotle, believed that all matter was made up of earth, air, fire, and water, Democritus's atomic theory was abandoned. Now, one of the easiest similarities to spot is between the atom and the solar system. Every atom, according to the Bohr or solar system model of matter, is made up of a nucleus and a number of electrons that orbit around the nucleus. The nucleus is significantly larger than the electrons. These particles are thought to be small spheres or balls. This is similar to a solar system which has a large sun in the center and planets rotating in orbits around it. Consider the element oxygen which has a nucleus and eight electrons in orbit. Our solar system consists of our sun and eight planets orbiting it. Is it possible that the third electron from the oxygen nucleus is similar to our Earth, but on a much smaller and different scale? Perhaps 
tiny little people or animals are living on that electron. When they peer through their tiny telescopes at the other atoms and molecules around them, they may believe they are viewing the entire universe. We can even fit Pluto into this model. It was once thought to be a planet and it does orbit the Sun. However, it's no longer considered a planet and it could have been a large asteroid captured into orbit by the Sun. Well, just as an extra electron in orbit around the oxygen nucleus would turn the atom into an ion, an extra asteroid rotating around the Sun would turn the solar system into a type of solar ion or similar. Following that line of thought, solar systems could be atoms in a much larger universe. Some stars are much larger than our Sun while others are much smaller, just as some atomic nuclei are large and others are small depending on their atomic number and weight. The rotating galaxies may be analogous to rotating eddies in a liquid or gas. Given this resemblance, is it possible that each solar system is actually an atom in some physical system? Our solar system could be analogous to oxygen, while others could be analogous to chlorine, iron, or uranium. In fact, the universe we see through our telescopes could be nothing more than a collection of billions of atoms in a larger universe. What about applying this idea of an atom to the whole universe? Well, that idea looks a lot less impossible when you think that everything known to us consists of the same electron. This has moved scientists to explore the idea that every electron in the universe is actually a single particle that moves back and forth in time. There is a lot of complicated math involved, but it answers some of quantum physics' most difficult, unanswered questions. John Archibald Wheeler, a theoretical physicist who worked on the hydrogen bomb at Los Alamos and later taught at Princeton, devised the theory. In the 1940s and 1950s, he was largely credited with reigniting interest in general relativity. The idea that every electron is the same electron is known as the one electron theory. So what is this theory about? One of the main reasons Wheeler proposed this theory is that every electron looks exactly the same. They're all the same mass and electric charge. This ultimately means that distinguishing electrons is impossible. So it's not surprising that Wheeler came up with the idea that if all electrons look and act the same, they might be the same electron. And proposing that the entire universe contains only one electron may not seem so absurd when we consider that the only difference is in our understanding of what an electron is. In practice, everything would remain unchanged. According to the one electron theory, just as an electron can be bounced around in space when struck by light, it may also be able to bounce backward in time. As a result, electrons moving backward in time are positrons, the antimatter component of electrons. Not only are all electrons the same, but all positrons are the same electron moving backward. But what does this theory connote or suggest? Let's start like this. It is estimated that the universe contains 10 to the power of 80 atoms. We can simplify the number of electrons in the universe to around 10 to the power of 80 if we ignore the fact that many atoms have more than one electron. Although electrons are theoretically treated as stable, the experimental lower bound of the electron's mean lifetime is frequently given as 6.6 .6 times 10 raised to the power of 28 years. We can use this to see how this theory works in practice. According to the theory and these numbers, the universe's one electron has traveled through it 10 raised to the power of 80 times, each time taking 460 septillion years. We can double these numbers for each time the electron had to travel back in time, resulting in the one electron theory's one electron being 10 raised to the power of 105 years old. This theory, however, is not without its flaws. If a single electron travels forward through time as an electron and backward as a positron, there should be the same number of positrons as electrons at any given point, but that is not the case. The idea is that our universe with all of its galaxies, stars and planets is just one tiny component in a larger structure. This structure, known as a multiverse, would be made up of an infinite number of universes all existing in their own separate dimensions. According to multiverse theory, our universe, with its hundreds of billions of galaxies and nearly countless stars spanning tens of billions of light years, may not be the only one. 
Instead, there could be an entirely separate universe from ours, and another, and another. Indeed, there may be an infinite number of universes, each with its own set of physical laws, collections of stars and galaxies, if stars and galaxies can exist in those universes, and possibly even intelligent civilizations. The concept of the multiverse appears in a few areas of physics and philosophy, but inflation theory is the most prominent example. Inflation theory describes a fictitious event that occurred when our universe was only a fraction of a second old. The universe experienced a period of a rapid inflation, inflating to become many orders of magnitude larger than its previous size in an extremely short period of time. Our universe's inflation is thought to have ended around 14 billion years ago. However, inflation does not end everywhere at the same time. It is possible that as one region's inflation ends, another region's will continue. Thus, while inflation ended in our universe, it is possible that inflation continued and continues even today in other much more distant regions. Individual universes can pinch off from larger inflating expanding universes, resulting in an infinite sea of eternal inflation teeming with countless individual universes. In this eternal inflation scenario, each universe would emerge with its own physics laws, particle collection, force arrangement, and fundamental constant values. This could explain why our universe has the properties it does, particularly those that are difficult to explain using basic physics such as dark matter or the cosmological constant. The most compelling evidence for the multiverse is the existence of life, particularly intelligent life capable of making cosmological observations. Certain aspects of our universe appear to be unique and important for supporting life, such as star longevity, carbon abundance, light availability for photosynthesis, and the stability of complex nuclei. However, if you are given a random universe, you are unlikely to find all of these characteristics. The multiverse provides one explanation for why all of these features are favorable in our universe. Other universes exist, but we observe this one because it is capable of supporting complex life. In other words, so many things had to fall into place perfectly in our universe for life to exist, and if there was only one universe, there probably wouldn't be any life in it. However, there are enough chances for life to appear in at least one universe in a multiverse. But what about the physical evidence of the multiverse? Well, many scientists have attempted to find more physical hard evidence for the existence of the multiverse. For example, if a neighboring universe happened to be nearby long ago, it may have collided with ours, leaving a detectable imprint. That imprint could take the form of distortions in the cosmic microwave background and the light left over from when the universe was a million times smaller than it is today, or strange galaxy properties in the direction of the collision. Scientists are looking for evidence of the multiverse by looking for specific types of black holes that may be artifacts of pieces of our universe that separated into their own universe through a process known as quantum tunneling. If some regions of our universe separated in this manner, they would have left behind bubbles in our universe, which would have evolved into these one-of-a-kind black holes which may still exist today. And lending more credence that the universe is a giant atom is the string theory. String theory is an attempt to integrate the two pillars of 20th century physics, quantum mechanics and Albert Einstein's theory of relativity into a unified framework capable of explaining all physical reality. It attempts to accomplish this by positing that particles are one-dimensional string-like entities whose vibrations determine particle properties such as mass and charge. This counterintuitive idea was first developed in the 1960s and 70s when strings were used to model data coming out of subatomic colliders in Europe. Strings provided an elegant mathematical description of the strong force, one of the four fundamental forces in the universe that holds atomic nuclei together. Theorists Michael Green and John Schwartz produced equations that showed how strings avoided certain inconsistencies plaguing models that described particles as point-like objects. Decades later, physicists demonstrated that these disparate ideas 
were all interconnected and could be combined with another theory known as supergravity, which operated in 11 dimensions. This approach resulted in yet another incarnation of string theory. String theory is one of the methods proposed for developing a theory of everything, a model that describes all known particles and forces and would supersede the standard model of physics, which can explain everything except gravity. Because of its mathematical beauty, many scientists believe in string theory. String theory's equations have been described as elegant and its description to the physical world as extremely satisfying. The theory explains gravity through a specific vibrating string whose properties correspond to those of the hypothetical graviton, a quantum mechanical particle that would carry the gravitational force. String theory has been used by researchers to try to answer fundamental questions about the universe, such as what happens inside a black hole, or to simulate cosmic processes such as the Big Bang. Some scientists have even tried to use string theory to understand dark energy, the enigmatic force that accelerates the expansion of space and time. And meanwhile, further work on string theory has yielded another mind-bending proposal. Uppsala University cosmologists proposed a new model in which the universe may be riding on an ever-expanding bubble in an extra dimension. The researchers offer a novel explanation for how the universe may be expanding in this theory. The fact of its accelerating expansion has been known for about the past 20 years, but the explanation for that has relied rather unsatisfyingly on the mysterious dark energy. The Swedish scientists approach this topic through the lens of string theory, which holds that all matter is composed of tiny vibrating strings. In addition to the three spatial dimensions we experience on a daily basis, the theory allows for the existence of extra dimensions. According to the researchers at groundbreaking new theory, the universe may be sitting on the edge of an expanding bubble, with all matter existing on strings that reach outward from it into an extra dimension. According to the scientists, dark energy would be the inflating force in this bubble, the existence of which is supported by string theory. And if you're wondering, they believe such bubbles should be fairly stable, writing that there is a strong indication in favor of the stability of these bubbles. But what is more intriguing is that there may be more bubbles than just the one with our universe on it, with each of those carrying a different universe. In this context, the cosmology we see as 4D observers arises as an effective description of a dynamical object embedded in a higher dimensional space rather than as a result of vacuum energy. But that is not the end, this new theory can also redefine black holes. Gravitational collapse of four-dimensional string endpoints results in an unstable black string solution in five dimensions. Let's hear what you think of the vast universe in the comments section below.